But, but like, like the Deso products here, a tree is not only not toxic, a tree cleans the air. This is why the Deso Air Master is cleaning air. This is why these fabrics are cleaning air. They're not just not toxic. Yeah. That's not enough. That's just carbon neutral. Yeah. Technical nutrients. Yeah. You see, yeah, steel case, Herman Miller. Yeah, you're no longer selling a chair. You're selling healthy sitting insurance because you don't consume a chair. You only use it. Aren't in the Netherlands, in Benelux, 70% of the market changing. The whole company into cradle to cradle. Acton Nobel, yeah, this is Hans Weyer, the CEO of, of uh, Acton Nobel. And it's, fu it's fun because they signed a declaration and the, the subtitle, I need you to take care, that it was, the subtitle was uh, towards increasing, uh, develop solutions to minimize our ecological footprint. So I need to make sure that the handshake was on, uh, on the subtitle here. Yeah, and that it took three pictures for that. Yeah, so. But you see, the companies are changing. As you know, Acton Nobel merged with ICI here, and they all go into cradle to cradle. Yeah? And we see this Aveda, you will hear tomorrow about it. Method companies changing. But this is what they talk about. Yeah? Green, the greenest building is the one which never gets built. Yeah? We make buildings like trees. Yeah? My friend and colleague, Bill McDonough, is an architect, yeah? and we apply it to big buildings, and we show this is an energy positive building, not a passive house. Yeah? No, this, these building clean air. Here you see the fort, yeah? as you see, fort, bed fort. Yeah? So, yeah? so the fort, uh, uh, the, uh, the fort uh, rouge plant is the world's largest green roof, saves about $35 million of stormwater protection, and generates life for dozens of bird species, yeah, which are now have a space to be, which haven't been seen for decades there. Yeah. And by the way, Bill McDonough is even much better for the environment because instead of a tie, you take a bow tie, it takes less stuff as well. Yeah. So, so we do buildings which are beneficial, not less bad, yeah, which become habitats, which support water, which clean water, which make fresh air, no, not reduction, no avoidance, no minimization thing. Here you can see a building which is energy positive. The windows, for example, you don't consume a window, but you only can make an energy saving window when it, when it contains toxic stuff. But it's only toxic when it goes to the environment. For example, you know copper? Yeah, copper for biological cycles is a disaster. It destroys the whole biological system. But in a technical system, you can use it forever as a technical nutrient. So this is not zero waste, it's all nutrients. Yeah. So Shuko, Europe's largest maker of windows, they're no longer selling these windows, they're selling the use of the windows. Yeah. You sell two, 25 years of looking through insurance. So you don't need to use the cheapest stuff, you can use the best materials. And the company turns into a raw material bank. So every year the company gets more valuable, like Desso as well. But it's first the right thing. So we would never work with them if they would use PVC, yeah? because PVC is wrong. So why should we optimize the use of PVC? So I said, the first thing I said to Steph, if you want to recycle PVC, yeah, like other competitors, yeah, he, that doesn't make sense. Yeah? I'm not there to optimize the wrong things, to make them perfectly wrong. Yeah? You can do something, for example. Yeah? Um, I, I was just giving a speech in Dresden, yeah? and because my family suffered a lot from totalitarian regime. Yeah, I was making fun uh, of the neo-Nazis somehow. Yeah. Yeah, and so when you're in front of a neo-Nazi, I can tell you an inefficient neo-Nazi is so much better than an efficient one. Yeah. <laughs> so efficiency is not really the same. But then I said, look, even in Germany, it's time now to say something positive about neo-Nazis. Yeah. That everybody felt really bad to the day. Yeah. I said, yeah, for, compared to me, they use so much less shampoo. Yeah? So, <laughs> isn't that great? Yeah? They, they protect the environment, isn't that great? Yeah? So, so, we can reinvent everything. Yeah? Yeah, we can reinvent everything. So, we can, we can make windmills which compensate the noise from highways, yeah? which make noise to compensate the noise. We can combine them with transmission towers. We work with Vestas in Denmark on these systems. We do this systematically, yeah? we do this scientifically, that's why I'm teaching at the university for that. 
We work on a lot of areas. This is, for example, a car, and I would like to discuss with you mobility experts here. Yeah, a car where you just sell uh, 50,000 miles of transportation, 60,000 miles, yeah. This includes the, the fuel, it includes insurance, maintenance, everything. You really pay per mile. And, and the connection of the materials are clues. The clues are eaten up by enzymes. So after five years, yeah, you, you pay per mile yeah, by credit card every month. And then after five years, the car goes back in an enzyme bath and you can filter the components and take them back into technical or biological cycles. Then you can use the best tires, yeah? you can use the best uh, lubricants, you can use by far the best materials. Yeah. So it's about a beneficial footprint. Yeah? Just to show you something in that. You, you remember the baby at the beginning yeah? with the diapers? Yeah? Uh, when you would change the super absorbers for the baby packaging yeah? into, into a, a material like cellulose derived super absorbers. If you would change the plastic, you could grow with one baby, 150 trees in Israel, just with one baby, because the water absorbers would allow to the growth of the trees. Yeah? So why should we try to be less bad? For the baby, it means that it would be carbon positive already from the beginning, yeah? for the whole lifetime, just by the trees which you can plant with the diapers. So why should we be less bad when we can be good? That means to reinvent things. And you can see we make a whole festival about the Netherlands because the Netherlands are changing the whole country into cradle to cradle, yeah? including Philips, that you will hear Dovian Jastra. You have Marike van der Werft here, for example, one of the leading experts in the Netherlands. Yeah? Here you can ask her later about it because she can talk to you about the Dutch perspective. The, uh, the Dutch could never romanticize nature. When you would talk about Mother Earth, yeah, the next flood would take you. Yeah, because one third is below sea level uh, in the Netherlands. When you're romanticizing nature, like you do it in, in, in the United Kingdom, even His Royal Majesty Prince Charles, yeah, yeah, talking about Mother Earth. Yeah, if you talk about Mother Earth, the child is always bad. So you feel bad from the beginning because the mother is good, yeah, isn't it? But I want to tell you the strongest carcinogens are still natural chemicals. The most toxic chemicals are still natural chemicals. So we can learn from nature, but we don't need to romanticize nature. Yeah, we only romanticize nature because we have destroying nature before. Yeah? When you beat the shit out of your child, the next day you feel bad. That's what it is. Yeah? It's a guilt compensation thing. Yeah? But there is no Mother Earth. Our natural lifetime expectation would be 30 years. 90% of all the people ever lived on this planet didn't get older than 30. Yeah. But we can learn from nature endlessly. Nature can be our teacher. That's why biomimicry is so important, to learn from nature. Yeah. But we don't need to apologize for being on this planet. Yeah. It's a, it, our nature is our teacher to learn from. For example, I'm analyzing mother's milk yeah, now for more than 24 years. Yeah. There's not one sample which could be sold as drinking milk. The mother milk contamination is about 2,500 chemicals here. Yeah. Not one sample could be sold as drinking milk. Nature would never make chemicals which accumulate in biological systems. So we can learn. But this is not about green chemistry, it's about good chemistry. Chemistry which accumulates in biological system is just bad chemistry. Design, which means toxic stuff, is just bad design. So we don't need ethics for that. Quality is enough. Yeah. Think about holistic quality. And sure, we need to learn and we need to include cultural and social aspects in that. And you can see this in Berlin for six weeks, we will demonstrate mostly Dutch examples because there are about 200 companies changing into cradle to cradle now. And the first one who did this for the whole company was Steph. This is why I really appreciate that you could come. Thank you so much. This is cradle to cradle. This is an innovation engine. It allows that we can use 30 years of blaming and shaming now for innovation. And this is why Ellen MacArthur is so important to put people, to get people together. This is why it's so important that you become catalysts and that all of you have qualification. I only have qualification, as I said, for a tiny little piece. It needs all your qualification in the same way. Thank you very much. <laughs>